Hello, my friends! Today I will show you how to play the new no-brainer hero, Nolan. What's that? He is really strong and actually quite easy to learn, at least when you know how he works and what makes him so strong. Like always, let's start with the basics. His passive has two effects. Firstly, whenever you use a skill, you will leave a rift behind, which will slow enemies within it by 30%. When two or more rifts collide, they will explode, which pulls the enemies towards their center and receive damage. The scaling with 140% extra physical attack is quite high, so items with physical attack are needed for him. Each time you hit an enemy hero or creep with a rift explosion, you restore 15 energy. And if an enemy get hit by multiple rifts, the damage after the first hit get reduced by 40%. The second attack gives you an enhanced basic attack. After you haven't dealt or received any damage from an enemy hero for 5 seconds, you can dash towards your target, deal extra damage and leave a rift behind as this counts as a skill. The first skill lets you make a horizontal cut that also leaves a rift on the first enemy you hit. And the second skill lets you dash and, you guessed it right, leaves a rift on the first enemy you hit. By the way, those skill cooldowns are real. I'm not using the no cooldown mode here. Lastly, his ult removes all debuffs except for suppression of course, and he slashes the targeted location three times while dashing back. This leaves behind three rifts, which will activate themselves. The base damage from his first and ult is pretty high, but the real damage you're dealing with your rift. So always make sure to hit the enemy with as many rift explosions as possible. Now let's have a look at a few combos. You should almost always have your enhanced basic attack ready when engaging. So when I say basic attack now, I mean the enhanced one. The first combo is second plus basic attack plus first skill. You first close the distance to your target, then dash towards them with your basic attack and use your first skill to trigger a rift explosion. This one is awesome for finishing low enemies without using your ult. And of course in the very early game when you don't have your ult yet. The second one you use when you can get close to an enemy without dash. Basic attack plus second plus first plus normal basic attack. With this one you can finish off squishy enemies that have less than 50% HP. Unless you're underfarmed of course. Next is his ult combo. Second plus basic attack plus first plus ult. With the second and basic attack you close the gap and with the first and ult you deal huge burst damage. You can execute this combo without the first skill, but then you often don't deal enough damage to finish the enemy. Also the delay between his skills is super short so there is no real disadvantage including his first skill. Just make sure you use your first before your ult or you will waste it. You can of course also use the combo from earlier, where you engage with your enhanced basic attack. Then you use basic attack plus second plus first plus old. As late game combo, you can even add your first and second skill twice. Here I use second plus basic attack plus first plus old, then second again as the cooldown is already over and then another first. In the late game you can basically spam your first and second skill until you run out of energy. Which brings me to the next part, his playstyle. Nolan is a very buff dependent hero so he should be the jungler. I tried him out as a side laner because my team didn't adjust but I can't recommend it at all. He has his first power spike on level 2 already, as you can use the very first combo I mentioned to create 3 rifts. So invading him is not the easiest task, which makes him already a good jungler. Still, you should try to become level 4 before starting any ganks on the side lane. This would be easy if your allies didn't decide to pick a second jungler in every match, but okay. Advanced server is really hell, man. Once you're on level 4, you try to make your first gank work. Immobile targets are always much better than mobile ones, as you have no stun whatsoever to prevent their dashes. The marksman is often the better target, so go there first. If I had my ult, we could have gotten one or even two kills here, but... Oh well. Once the first gank dance is over, you go to the turtle of course. If you have full energy and the blue buff, 
you can cut it down pretty quickly. Generally, you can clear your jungle very fast, but it costs a lot of energy. So if you're not in a hurry, you can use your enhanced basic attack and first to clear the jungle. In the early and mid game, you search for gank opportunities, of course, as every assassin should, and make sure to collect the turtles. Because as most other assassins, he also suffers from the assassin syndrome. In the late game where all enemies stick together, it becomes very hard to execute your combo cleanly, as you just can't sustain much of the incoming damage. Timing is super important when you want to avoid the neutral one for one trade. At least you can't really get stopped by stuns, as you can easily remove them with your ult. Split pushing is also possible with him, although he is pretty slow compared to other heroes. With his dash he can easily escape when needed though, and no squishy wants to stop him in the 1v1 as well. So you can say he is decent when it comes to split pushing. Now which heroes can he counter, which heroes are his counters, and who are good allies for him? Generally he counters all immobile heroes who are squishy. This include marksmen like Clint, Leslie, Hanabi, Layla and Mia, mages like Gord, Farsar, Eve and Eudora, or supports like Florin and Estes, as they can't heal before they are dead. He's also pretty good against heroes who have no extreme mobility, such as Bruno, Beatrix, Cecilia, Xavier and Irithyll. When you're able to ambush squishies, you can basically catch them all, even if any of her reaction time is not fast enough. On the open field it will be harder of course, so practice how to use bushes. Enemies with stuns are also not the biggest problem for you, as you can remove the debuff with your low cooldown ultimate and just dash away. He struggles against tanky enemies though. Burst heroes are never good against these heroes, so avoid picking him if the enemy has a tanky jungler like Fredrin, Uranus as a XB laner and a tank as Romer. He also struggles against some other assassins. Saber and Eamon have a lock on burst skill which he can't escape that easily, and if he get caught by Hayabusa's ult he will be turned into sushi. You can keep up with Lancelot, Ling and even Fanny though, as you can avoid their attacks pretty easily. He's also not bad against fighters. Although he can't kill them that easily, they also can catch him without any trouble. So as long as you are not running headfirst into them, you shouldn't have a big problem. Generally, you should always remember that you have insane mobility, especially in the late game, where your first and second skill cooldown can be lower than one second. So use that to your advantage. You should still respect the dash skills of your enemies, and only fully commit after they have used it so you can hand them their one way ticket back to their base. Other than that, follow the old assassin rule. Squishy mages and especially marksmen are your target and please don't blast your ult into the tank's face. When it comes to your allies, it's pretty simple. Get allies who work in a teamfight strat. You need a set tank at your side like Atlas, Kufra, Ruby, Lolita or even the good old Tigreal. They can stun or even pull your enemies to one spot where you can blast them away with your combo. You are an AoE damage specialist, so having the chance to dive in when multiple enemies are stunned is like a wet dream for you. Basically any ally who can provide stuns is a good friend of yours, as you can catch even those damn dashing rats there. A perfect team setup would be a stat tag as a roamer and a CC specialist on the XB and mid lane. Let's say for example Atlas, Ruby and Eve. What you don't need though are a bunch of other burst and squishy heroes who can't sustain anything. For example, a team of Natalia, Rome, Harley mid, Dyroth XB and Layla Gold would be a big mess in the late game, as there would be nobody who can tank any of the incoming damage. Healers like Florin and Essence are also not really helpful, as healing supports generally work better with tanky allies. Now let's move on to his build. As assassin, he needs the typical burst hero items to fully realize his potential. He needs flat penetration against squishy enemies, a lot of physical attacks so his rifts can deal insane damage, and believe it or not, cooldown reduction. Yes, although his cooldowns are already super low, he really benefits from cooldown reduction as you can more or less spam his first and second skill non-stop and use your ultimate way more frequently. Blade of the Outer Seas is the first item for him. It gives you good physical attack, flood penetration and the extra damage from its passive. Don't forget to get Fury Hammer as your very first item after you got your jungle boots. 
Next, get magic shoes as your boots for the cooldown reduction. We aim to get 40% cooldown reduction, so we can spam his skills as much as possible. Next, get hunter strike for more flat penetration, physical attack and cooldown reduction. The movement speed boost is also perfect as you can easily trigger it with your ult to disengage. Then get endless battle. It lets you deal true damage multiple times when executing your combo, gives you physical attack and movement speed and the last cooldown reduction you need in your build. With the magic shoes, hunter strike and endless battle you have 30% and from the blue buff you get another 10% which means you hit the cap of 40%. On max level both your first and second skill will have a cooldown of 0.6 seconds and your ult has a cooldown of 9.6 seconds which is insane. Don't forget it can remove CC effects. So you can spam it around like there is no tomorrow even when you are just farming. Then you need Malefic Roar unless you are facing 5 squishies. Even though you are not targeting tanks, you still want to deal as much damage as possible to them. Otherwise they are almost unkillable for you, which means they can pressure you to death. Like real life death, not like in game death. Lastly you can choose between multiple situational items. You could get the typical defense items for assassins like immortality to get an extra life or Athena shield if a burst mage fell in love with your nuts. You could also go for some spell there. Some players use it so they can sustain their incoming damage while engaging, but I'm not a big fan of it as I usually kill my enemies before I even need the regen. Still, you could swap Endless Battle for Bloodlust Axe or Queen's Wings. You could even use both for the ultimate spell vamp experience. Just make sure you don't have over 30% cooldown reduction from your items. If 3 of your core items already give you cooldown reduction, you can swap your magic shoes for tough boots. If none of that sounds fancy to you, you can also go for Blade of Despair for pure physical attack. The emblem is simple, you use the assassin emblem with rupture, season hunter and lethal ignition. Now before you start to rule the ranks with Nolan, you should check out this video where we explain how to counter every meta hero. Also a huge shout out to our MLG family members especially the mythical glory members like Nadav CK and Nightseeker. See you mother!